Hello. We have another video here, and uh, in this video, which is going to have two or three segments edited together into one video, uh, we're going to be creating a smoke tester. One of my viewers, George, and I don't know where he is located, we have been kind of communicating here through the comment section forwards and backwards. He suggested I should create or build one of these smoke testers. He built it for his car. He has a 560 SL, I believe. No, 380 SL. And he had problems with the boot. He had put in a new boot or the boot he had was cracked and it was leaking. And uh, then he got a new one. He put it in, but it wasn't sealing completely. So he had to do some, uh, you know, fixing there. And he also watches Monkey Wrench Mike. And as we know, Monkey Wrench Mike built a smoke, te uh, smoke tester um, of his own. And uh, that was somewhat successful. So George did the same thing, but I like George's actually better. Nothing against Monkey Wrench Mike, but uh, George did a pretty good job with the way he built it. And he got a pretty good uh, smoke output there. And um, so George suggested to me that I should check my car. You know, I got now over 7,000 miles on it. Since I put everything together, the boot has now 7,000 miles on it. The new fuel distributor, all the parts I put in there, new, all of that vacuum related stuff. And then of course, as you know, about these two tubes I had replaced now for the third time with the, uh, what was the company named? Trustech, Tritech, Trucktech, with the Trucktech parts. And I took the Mercedes-Benz ones out. That went pretty well so far. They have been in there now for four weeks, eight weeks or something like this. I would have to scroll through the videos. Well, anyway, uh, I don't know what Mike, Monkey Wrench Mike used in his video. I think he used an old solder iron. And George had an old solder iron floating around. All of my solder irons I got, I got eight different ones, and I need every one of them. And none of them, the ones I have are cheap to replace. They're all in the, with one exception, that's an old Radio Shack when I paid $7.99 for 20 years ago when they were going for that. I think it's one of those 25 watt irons, which are not really enough. But I even use that still today. And all the other ones still all by far more expensive. So I didn't have an old solder iron floating around. And I have been looking at solder irons. They're all for the better part now, 25, 35 bucks, even the cheap ones. By the time you add shipping to it, they may be as high as $40. So I went on eBay and I found a fellow who actually sells a kit to make your own let me see if we can show this better here. Your own smoke uh, tester. So he sends this out in that little, what is that, a one gallon paint bucket here. Comes with a lid. And the best part is the heat element. Is he's using a resistive heat wire here. It draws about six amps. I tried that already at 12 volts. And it comes with the screws, as you can see, and it is basically mounted into the and the wick. It's got a real wick to it, and it is mounted so that the wick touches the bottom of the container where you pour the baby oil in, and then you fill it up, if I understand that correctly, to about here, about three quarters up of the leg, about to here, and this will create a massive. And then the wick, of course, is gonna absorb the baby oil and that will feed itself through and then on top of it he actually sends a reducer out which uh, reduces the flow rate to 0 0.6 cubic meter per hour and that was um, I think that was what was it now in liters four liters per minute or something like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little rotating um, 
valve to it with a handle on it, just 90 degrees, so I can open and close it. Maybe 180 degrees or 90 degrees, I don't know yet. And he has the, and this way I can turn it off and I can turn it on. And he has all the mounting hardware, as you can see here, oops. Everything comes with it. So he has already the reducer, which goes on one of these things here. And I would figure, can figure this out on how he actually does that. I guess you have to uh, use the other connector. At least this is not exactly working here. Or oh, this is for the output. This is the output. This is where your half inch or quarter inch hose, clear plows, attaches to. And you have a seal, sealing stuff here. And this all comes together so you can screw this. This would be the output. This here is basically for the input side of this. You probably will have to use one of these two nuts. This nut is probably going to fit on this one here. Yep. So you have to put the coupler in here to hook your air hose up. And the airflow is in this direction. You can see the arrow. So this goes with this and this goes with this here. Now I got it. Sorry, I haven't really looked at it and it didn't come with a manual, but uh, you really shouldn't need a manual. Yeah. This here is pretty much tight. So this goes onto this here. And uh, you really have to work this in. Yep. And this will be the output side. So this is basically, you drill a hole in a can, you put this in here on top probably somewhere. You drill a hole and you screw this in place and it will seal this. So this is the output, this is the input. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take that reducer out and I'm gonna put a coupler on here with the valve because this way I can better regulate the reduced lowered air pressure so I can come in with 100 PSI, 120 PSI, whatever we have in the shop and then actually can reduce this and turn it on and off rather than plugging and unplugging the unit. And then of course here we have our screws, I guess, for the, yeah, this is all related to the wires here. So this is basically assembled. You drill a hole, a fairly large hole, and then you put these grommets in here and you put your screw through. This way it will seal it. And then you screw on the outside he supplies a 12 volt battery cable where you hook this up to your battery with a fuse pack in it. Let me just see what the fuse is. That's a 10 m fuse. And uh, this way the whole thing is secured. This entire pack as you see it here is $44. Um, plus I think $11 or $14 in shipping. And this was about the same if I would have to buy a solder iron if I had to buy a solder iron, I would still have to buy this stuff here. This here is really nice because this way you can easier regulate the pressure going in. Uh, George just used the air nozzle on his hose shop, on his shop pressure. And uh, he had a hose coming out here. He has two of those, one going in and one going out. And he adjusts the pressure going into this whole system this way. And... Uh, if I use a rheostat with it, then I can actually control the amount of smoke uh, with it. So this is now the project. Um, the, of course, with the handle on here, I have no way of measuring the actual output pressure here. But um, I may find a, I think I have an extra pressure gauge. Uh, I think the pressure is around 30 PSI. And the flow rate would be about five liters per minute at the reduced rate. If I put the handle on it, I can reduce the flow rate even more, which means it produces a real heavy, thick smoke if needed, or we can increase the uh, you know, flow rate, and this way we can get more air moved into larger cavities, and we can then basically... Um, you know, see where the leaks are coming from. And I thought I'm gonna show you guys this here and I will make then another video which will be added to this one here. 
and then we have these sequences going through over the next few days or weeks today is saturday uh september 10th where i'm making this video and um that's the first part of it and the next part will be the assembly of this once i get to urschlands and i get my missing hardware for this that means that little hand valve and and um, you know the couplings what i need for it okay we see you in the next segment so I was able to get the additional goodies. I got my shutter valve here, then a reducer and a coupler, the uh, quarter inch male nipple to get into the pressure hose. This came with the set. We had that already, so we have the barbed connection here. Three eighths hose, I got 10 feet of it. And uh, our heater with the mounting uh, hardware and the the electrical connection and our bucket which came already with us and two bottles of baby oil at the dollar store $3.99 for 20 fluid ounces that was the cheapest deal I could get these parts here these four parts and the hose are $34.81 that's what that came out to $44 for this set here, with this here, with this, 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 and this, and this, and this here, 34 So we're looking around 80 bucks with this 100 by the time it's all said and done to build this. And um, I got the drill here. So we're going to drill some holes into this bucket, get this all situated. Then we're going to take a look at this. We're going to do a test run. I have to see if I have a 12 volt battery here. Otherwise I have to hook it up to the car. Okay. Okay, so here we got it. We got the wick and the heat element placed in here. They go all the way down to the bottom of it. I don't know if that's visible or not. Here's the thing on there, half inch hole for those to fit these uh, grommets on there. Then a 3 8 hole for this thing. It didn't come out too beautiful, but it is sealing. My valve, and of course now the center of gravity has shifted over here. So I have to support the bucket when I hook up the air hose to it. And that was basically it. And I put the output nozzle on top, 3 8 hole. Goes on like this. And now we can fill it up, bring it over to the car, and take a look at this and see what comes out of it. So, okay, that took about a minute here to get this going. Um, the problem was I had those too tight and they made a short to the bucket. The bucket gets very hot, so you have to be very, very careful with it. Um, and I attached it up here, the wrong hose. I had to clamp the hose on here. 3 8 hose is metric and it doesn't fit exactly a 3 8 bob, so you have to clamp it down little bit too small for the thing. I got medium sized gloves and they don't fit here. So I had to use the Urschland's bag and it is leaking a little bit out of here. You can see this, it's coming out of there, out of the, uh, what is it called? The exhaust fumes and from underneath the bag, everything else is sealed off. It is very difficult. Um, it would be nice if the people who make videos and they explain things that they point these things out so we know medium gloves, small gloves will not work if you put them on here. You need large size gloves with a rubber band at least. And uh, it's quite a drain on the battery. I had it running now in this position. You can see it because it is kind of a little bit leaky. If I go full power, you can see it is just coming out here from underneath uh, the uh, newspaper, not the newspaper, the Urschland bag. And then this thing here, our little shop thing is not that good anymore either. It's, uh, that thing is on its last leg here, this here. I have been fighting this here all along. See this? That needs a new one. And like I said, as this bucket gets hot, so you have to be careful 
it's not the best setup it sure is not close to what you have here and uh but it works with this little release you can nicely control the entire flow and the reducer is very helpful in this so now you can see this where this is coming out here it's all coming here from the underneath the um, thing it's coming out and it's coming out from underneath the um, if you go full bore because this thing is not sealed here this will come out of the throttle linkage too if you go full bore but the usual culprits they're all sealed so this is kind of what that looks like you can see i got quite some pressure in here this is actually way too much pressure for this test so if we're gonna reduce this you can see how long the pressure actually persists in it. See now it is coming down. Let me just go up a little bit. So you can see on how far I have the handle here going. This thing is driving me nuts. We need to put a new coupling on here. Oh shit.